Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're having a look at another dev blog for the next update, which of course hasn't been named yet, but hopefully it will be soon. This is for the IGN Yubari. This is going to be a Japanese light cruiser, which is coming to the game at rank 3. It's also going to be a premium, it's going to be a GE premium, so very similar to a lot of other cruisers that have been added to other nations. The Yubari comes in at rank 3, meaning that it's going to be useful for grinding rank 1, 2, 3, three and four of the Japanese blue water tech tree and uh, that's the majority of the stuff going on which will be quite nice obviously it really depends on what its BR is going to be um, because it does have some interesting weaponry and ideas around it the way I would describe this thing I understand they call it a light cruiser for me this is much more of like a bulky destroyer uh, than anything kind of like the 4-7 Italian machines that we have running around anyway let's get into the history of the Yubari the Yubari was designed as a ship which would be an experimental light cruiser, combining new ideas of the time, such as powerful weapons, good defense, but also keeping the speed of a destroyer leader. The main feature in the project was the inclusion of armor for the ship's powertrain. The armor of the hull and deck itself became a supporting structure. This freed up space for placing equipment and significantly reducing the ship's displacement. And with this ambitious project, it was proposed and even personally overseen by the leading designer of the Japanese Navy, Yuzuru Hiraga. It was completed also in record time, only in nine months after the start of the construction, and the ship was launched, and after around about five months, the cruiser was enlisted into the Imperial Navy. The experimental cruiser was named Yubari, after one of the rivers on the island of Hokkaido. Now, it began its service in 1921, so this is a very much a pre-World War II machine. The Yubari was actively used in maneuvers and exercises around that time. It was also decommissioned a lot and then returned to service several times, which is kind of funny. And the Yubari even received her baptism of fire during the first Shanghai incident, when the ship's artillery suppressed the Chinese fortifications on the shore. And then immediately after Japan's entry into World War II, the Yubari participated in the attempt to capture Wake Island in December of 1941, and then took part in all significant naval battles in the Pacific. In the spring of 1944, during a mission to transport troops and military supplies from Palau to Sonsoral Island, the cruiser entered the sights of the American submarine the Bluegill but the attack was aborted as the Ubari managed to hide behind the island. Lieutenant Commander Eric L. Barr ambushed the light cruiser on its return course, though. One of the six torpedoes launched at the cruiser reached the target, and as a result of the hit, the bow boiler rooms were instantly filled with water, and the fire started on the cruiser. After an unsuccessful attempt to tow the sinking ship, the, U the Yubari crew began an evacuation, but the next morning, the light cruiser Yubari had sank. So another Japanese machine that did not survive World War II. So now with the Yubari in the game and also a bunch of other machines uh, which are in like the I suppose premium section like the Shimakaze and then stuff such as the Udachi if you got that in a previous uh, in a previous event it means that you can actually run a pretty decent premium lineup now and to be able to grind through the blue water tech tree to the higher ships the Hayuga in general is seen as one of the better ships at the highest tier of the game and I know a lot of people have been grinding through many of the Japanese machines to try and get it and the Ubari would be one of those vehicles that you could use to be able to get through it pretty quickly me personally I've been playing the 4-7 cruisers and not having the greatest time in them so if the Ubari comes in at around about 4-7 which I think it will with its very limited armaments compared to a lot of other machines that are around the place I think uh, it could actually do pretty well 
Generally, when I look at the Yubari, what I see is not a cruiser. What I see is a heavy destroyer, something which will match up very well against destroyers, but not match up too well against cruisers. This is something which you see with a lot of vehicles. If you want examples of this uh, stuff, such as the Italian 47 cruisers is a really good example of this. Other things like the Carco as well for the Japanese, also some of the machines for Britain do the same thing, where they are very good at dealing a lot of damage to destroyers, but not so good at dealing damage to the heavy cruisers of the 5753 area. So you've got to be a little bit careful uh, when it comes to matchmaking with this thing and where you actually end up. The main caliber armament of the Ubari is four 140mm guns. There is two turrets uh, with two guns each, one on the front and one on the back. And uh, if, my, uh, if my experience with Japan will tell you anything, these turrets will be incredibly slow, but also the fire rates will not be the best compared to the other machines. What it will do, though, is it will put out good damage if you are able to be accurate with them and you'll be able to tear other ships apart. It, they will get access to HE and also two types of semi-armor piercing shells and also time fuse shells. So you're going to have the whole uh, range of weaponry to be able to deal with the enemies. There's also an auxiliary 120mm gun on the front of it, on the bow of the ship. This is kind of annoying, I'd rather it be another 140, but I suppose if the AI wants to have fun, they can just start trying to shoot down planes with it, that will be interesting. If that thing gets HEVT or something, it could actually be really good for taking out smaller ships um, or planes, uh, depending on the fire rates and also the traverse of the uh, turrets, but we're going to have to see going forward. The other thing that's quite impressive on it is it's AA battery. It gets actually 25, 25 millimeters over the thing, so this is obviously a late war refit of this. Um, it seems like during World War II, when Japan realized how effective planes were against their ships, they just threw 25s everywhere. And it seems like on the, U uh, the Ubari, it is no different with 25 barrels on the machine in either single sets or on double or triple mounts. So that should be a little bit of fun, uh, seeing them all go off. I was playing the Brooklyn the other day and uh, I was just, well, I was test driving it and just the amount of firepower that comes off that ship when a plane comes along is quite astounding. So at least from the air, you should be kind of covered. I've had issues with the 25 millimeters in the past, just not doing anything to planes. Um, and also the 40 millimeters with the HUVT from the Japanese. So I don't think their AA defense is the best, but 25 of them should be enough to at least take out whatever's going after you, or at least trade kill uh, with us, which will be good. Now, the Ubari uh, will also have to deal with something which is uh, obviously defining in the meta right now, which is the destroyer DM changes uh, from the last update. Even though this machine has a 38mm armored belt and an armored deck and, and uh, 368 uh, crew, generally I've found use in using stuff such as AP with HE filler against uh, destroyers nowadays because of how their uh, machines are set up and because of the DM changes of it. So a lot of people are going to be running AP. The Your armor will not really do anything. If anything, it will just set off the fuses of the rounds that are attacking you. And it means that your uh, actual survivability will be quite low in this machine. So you've got to be a little bit careful of that. And since it only has two main uh, caliber towers, uh, it means that the ammo stowage is very obvious where it is. So you can pop that, and if one of them is popped, then, well, guess what? Basically, you're down to two guns, and that's about it, which really isn't very nice. Overall, when I look at this machine, I see a good opportunity to be able to bolster the 4-7 Japanese lineup if it comes in at 4-7. If it comes in higher than that, 
then I think this machine will unfortunately be dead on arrival. If it comes in at 4.3, that would also be very nice, but if it comes in at 4.7, it'll be a decent premium to use to get the bonuses on, to be able to get into the higher echelons of the Japanese tree. If this was a standard tech tree vehicle, I don't think I'd pay it too much notice, but the bonuses definitely help it out in its use. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Lafouche, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.